Uh, for today's briefing, we're reporting on three periods. From Friday to Saturday, uh, we had 654 new cases diagnosed with COVID-19. From Saturday to Sunday, an additional 659 people were diagnosed. And between Sunday and today, 646 new cases. That um, adds up to 1,959 people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 over this weekend, including three epidemiologically linked cases, bringing our total in British Columbia to 22,944 people with COVID-19. By health authority, the new cases over the last three days are 455 people in Vancouver Coastal Health, 1,361 people in the Fraser Health Region, 41 people on Vancouver Island, 87 people in Interior Health Region, 14 people in the Northern Health Region, and one a case in a person who resides outside of Canada. We're now up to 6,279 active cases around the province in all health authorities, of whom 181 people are in hospital, 57 of whom are in critical care or ICU. Sadly, we've had nine new deaths from COVID-19 over the weekend, bringing our total to 299. The majority of these people were older, people living in long-term care or people who with underlying illnesses in hospital. But we are always struck by the challenges and the tragedy um, of having to deal with deaths at this time when it is so challenging for all of us. And our condolences and our thoughts are with the family members and the caregivers and the communities of these people. We continue to have um, a large number of people under active public health monitoring, 10,928 people and 16,087 people who have now recovered from COVID-19. Over this past three days as well, we've had 11 new healthcare outbreaks in facilities primarily in Vancouver Coastal, but also in the interior and, uh, sorry, in Fraser Health and Vancouver Coastal and in interior health. They are at the Al Hogg Pavilion, the Jackman Manor, the George Derby Centre, the Kiwanis Care Centre, Columbus Residence, Holy Family Hospital, again, uh, the Arbutus Care Centre, the Pix Assisted Living Centre, the Village by the Station, Hamlets at West Side, and Burnaby Hospital. Four outbreaks were declared over in the past weekend, including Harrow Park Centre, which is a relief to all of us, knowing the challenges that have gone on at Harrow Park more than once in this pandemic, Pine Grove Place, the village at Mill Hill, and Rosemary Heights Seniors Village. We now have 52 active outbreaks in our health care system, 45 in long-term care and assisted living, and seven in acute care. Additionally, there have been a number of exposure events in our community and two new declared community outbreaks, one at the Platinum Athletic Club and the other our second school outbreak at the Cambridge Elementary School in the Fraser Health Region. As the number of cases and outbreaks is showing, we are in the most challenging of times. We have come through a wave, we're now in the midst of our second. And it has become even more challenging and the virus is not stopping. We are um, trying to put in place the measures that we know will work, learning what we have learned. Through the COVID-19 pandemic, we also know that the individual efforts of people across BC have helped and are the reason we are keeping our hospitals, our schools and workplaces open and protecting the ones we love. It is the small yet essential efforts that all of us do that have a big collective impact. Things like staying home when we're ill, not having social gatherings. This has become even more critical in the past few weeks. And as you know, we put on orders around specific areas in the Vancouver Coastal and Fraser Health regions. But we are also reminding people around the province this virus is in our communities and can spread very easily. We need to say no to social gatherings right now. We also need to minimize our travel. 
maintain our safe distances as best we can at all times and use masks. I have been asked many times about why we do not have a, a provincial order mandating mask use here in BC. And the answer is, as I have said many times, in many locations we already do. And we know that it's an important part of the individual efforts that we do every day, like cleaning our hands, like coughing into our sleeve, like maintaining our physical distances. Wearing masks is now more than ever an important measure that we individually need to take. Let's remember that today we have seen that much of the transmission is occurring in private homes, at social gatherings, and in settings like workplaces where people are gathering together, not where we're having um, slight, um, very short interactions in a public setting. We also know that transmission is happening in some group indoor settings like group fitness activities and we've seen some large transmission events related to these. We've seen transmission happening as well when people are gathering before and after going to um, safe events which may be watching a game, um, picking up children from school, going to a restaurant. As a result, we put in orders to, in, to control those, um, the interactions we have at these high-risk locations. These are all locations where there are no other layers of protection and place and people are not wearing masks. In our own homes, we don't have plexiglass barriers. We don't keep our physical distancing. And those are the settings that are most challenging right now. This is not to say masks are not important. We have learned about the importance of masks over this past 10 months. And we know that they are yet another important measure that we must all embrace. Masks are important in businesses, in public spaces, on transit, in stores, on ferries, when we are around people we don't know and are unable to always maintain our safe distance. This also includes indoor public places like shopping malls, like community centres, like uh, stores and retail spaces where we have seen transmission occur. Let's remember that businesses are required to ensure the health and safety of their employees. And we have an order that requires every business to have a COVID-19 safety plan in place to operate safely. This is no different than a requirement to follow fire codes or meet sanitation requirements. In addition to such things as making sure there's barriers where needed, having fewer people in spaces, um, health screening, masks are the cornerstone of most and many of these COVID-19 safety plans in settings across the province. Masks should and need to be a part of all the plans for all businesses or organizations that have public areas or require employees to gather. For customers without a mask, they should be available. And for people who cannot wear a mask, businesses can provide virtual or curbside service instead. As employees and customers, we are also required to abide by these plans. You wouldn't ask a business owner to operate outside of their posted business hours, nor should you expect them to bend their COVID-19 rules for you. All of us need to pay attention to this, whether we work in this, these settings or whether we're customers or clients. In addition to using our safety layers and avoiding socializing right now, I strongly encourage people to limit your travel as much as possible. And that is in all areas of the province. We have asked that only essential travel um, be considered to and from the areas where we're seeing most transmission in the communities. But I call upon people across the province. We need to go back to how we were thinking earlier on in this pandemic, when the virus was in our community. We know a lot more now. And we know that the virus comes with us. And when we travel, we bring that risk with us and we take home the risk from where we've been. So now is not the time to travel for recreational or non-essential purposes, whether it's from the lower mainland to the island, whether it's between the interior and the north, or whether it's to and from other provinces in Canada. We need to stay local, stay in our communities now, and take those measures 
which will help us bend our curve back down. This is, this is a challenging time. Getting through this surge in new cases and through this pandemic requires all of us to go back to thinking about the important things we knew that we need to keep doing to support each other to do those too. It's how we reduce our risks, we protect our families, those we are closest to, our loved ones and our communities. People in British Columbia continue to show unwavering resilience and adaptability and we know we know what to do. We know we can do it and we know we can support each other to get through this challenging time. Let's support our friends, our neighbours, our schools, our workplaces, our hospitals and take care of those who are most at risk by using all of our layers of protection. We will get through this. We've had some more encouraging information today about vaccines, but we have a ways to go to get there. And now we have to step, step back and take those actions collectively, everybody doing their bit to get us through this next few months. And we will do this. We will do it together and we will care for each other and we'll be kind and we'll be calm and that will keep us safe. Thank you.